Wyoming Senator John Barrasso is not just a Senate leader, he's a medical doctor and chair of the Senate Republican Conference. Senator, it's good to have you this morning. Good morning. Sir. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Sandra. You told us uh, during the break that you watched every minute of the president's news conference. Where was he right? Where was he wrong? What does he need to do in the days ahead? Well, he is right that we are the most prepared nation on the face of the earth, as John Hop Johns Hopkins University has said. We still need to be very vigilant. The president was also right when he talked about if you have symptoms, flu-like symptoms, cover when you cough, wash your hands. If you feel sick, don't go to work. Those are the best things that we can do. But we have to be vigilant in the days ahead. Ahead, When you take a look at a country the size of ours with this population, it's really impossible to hermetically seal the entire nation. The president was right with the early travel restrictions, and he may have to do more as more countries are involved. Senator Brasso, but as you know, citing that John Hopkins study, as we spoke to one of the doctors from there this morning, while we are at the top of the list for preparedness for a situation like this, we are still not fully prepared. I think we stand at 87 percent. So where, where are our weaknesses as a country when it comes to preventing the spread of this virus? Well, it's a global concern. That's why you want early detection. You want to make sure that we have enough treatment available. We're not fully up for a vaccination because this is a new virus. And to create a new vaccine and enough of it to go around the country wouldn't be in place for this year. It would have to come next year. So no one in the world can be that level of prepared. But we have already, through Congress and signed into law, put into place over the years, an infectious disease rapid response team. This is all, there are 50 of these locations around the country. I was part of a, a, a data uh, dump essentially mm -hmm. yesterday from the American Heart Asso Hospital Association and from the, the group in Nebraska who are looking over Ebola. They're preparing hospitals around the country. Congress is ready financially mm -hmm. to move ahead with what is needed. We've had now our third or fourth meeting with the experts that the president had on the stage with him yesterday to say, what do you need? Do you need more? And for the first couple of weeks, they said they have what they needed. Now they need more, and it's time for Congress to make sure they have what they need. Senator, taking command of the situation important in any crisis as well. Obviously, there have been reports yesterday maybe the president would bring in an outside expert, have a quote-unquote czar. He said, no, I'm going to put the vice president in charge. Uh, here's Secretary Azar on of that. Listen. If I could just clarify, I think you're not getting the point here of this. I'm still chairman of the task force. Mick Mulvaney's been serving. A, having the vice president gives me the biggest stick one could have in the government on this whole of government approach. We just had one of our Democratic contributors, Jessica Tarlov, talking about something you're hearing from a lot of Democrats this morning. They're attacking the vice president, saying as governor he didn't handle other health crises well. I want to give you a chance. You know the vice president well. What do you think about putting him in command? Well, I think it's the right decision. I was with him yesterday afternoon before that press conference, but I have been meeting regularly with the people, the medical experts from the Centers for Disease Control, from the National Institute of Health, who were on the stage there yesterday. They are working well together. Things are well coordinated. There's more work to do. We're ever vigilant because this can turn quickly, but I think we're in the right position right now to deal with what could be a worldwide threat. Well, the president's responding uh, to what he says is panic that is being stoked by the other side. Um, here he is taking on Nancy Pelosi on that issue in that press conference last night. She's trying to create a panic, and there's no reason to panic. It's not true. She knows she, it, all, all they're trying to do is get a political advantage. This isn't about political advantage. We're all trying to do the right thing. They shouldn't be saying, this is terrible. President Trump isn't asking for enough money. How stupid a thing to say. Well, she shot right back, Senator, and said instead of delivering the well-coordinated, fully funded coronavirus response Americans deserve, she tweeted the Trump administration continues to leave key positions vacant and ransack other vital public health needs. So certainly this has been politicized. While there is news coming in, Senator, at this moment, we are now getting uh, some, some new data from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. They are confirming that 608 people have self-quarantined in the state uh, for possible symptoms of the coronavirus.
update to that, 377 of those completed their monitoring and they've been released without symptoms. There still remains 231 in self-quarantine. They're being monitored. Almost all of them had recent travel from China. What is your response to that news? Well, number one, in terms of what Nancy Pelosi and also Chuck Schumer has said, I'm a doctor. My focus is on the health of the American people. This should be a bipartisan concern and commitment. And, and it's disturbing to see it politicized, as Chuck Schumer has done on the floor of the Senate and how the Democrats did it in the debate in South Carolina with all the piling on, trying to, in my opinion, play politics in an area where we should be focused on public health and public safety. And Chuck Schumer, I haven't seen him at any one of these briefings, and I've attended uh, all of them, but he certainly is speaking out on the floor of the Senate. I think it's a mistake to do that. I think we ought to be focused on public health right now, not on trying to gain political points, which is what I see the Democrats trying to do. With regard to your question about Massachusetts, I mean, self-quarantine, I mean, that's what I was talking about earlier in terms of if you feel ill, don't go to work, stay home. And for people that are concerned, get tested. They're continuing to work to make sure tests are available around the country. Uh, but that is the, the way to do this. If you're feeling ill, if you're sick, you know, you know, wash your hands, cover when you cough, for others the same, and also stay away. You don't want those folks in crowds. Senator, in the last minute we have, um, what are you concerned about the report we have overnight about a patient in California who apparently has coronavirus uh, but had not recently done any international travel uh, officials on the ground in California trying to figure out exactly how they got it well th there's a, obviously a concern now the county where this report was came from is where Travis Air Force Base is which is where they had a number of people that were just brought back from China also a number of people that actually do have uh, the disease that were brought back into the country I think from that cruise line mm -hmm. so there is the likelihood of some immediate contact with folks who are known to have the disease all right thanks for staying on top of it with us Senator John Barrasso appreciate you coming in today sir Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, Senator.